Welcome to our lecture online. Our next problem is an interesting one. Here we have a manufacturer who manufactures ropes and the specifications are that they should have an average strength of 300 pounds with a standard deviation of 24 pounds. So we take a sample of 45 ropes, we test their strength and we find that on the average of those 45 ropes had a strength of 295 pounds and we want to have a 99% confidence level that the sample indicates that the ropes that are being, being manufactured are within the specification limits. Hmm, 295 versus 300 with a sample of 45, we want to be 99% confident. Wow, let's see if these ropes pass the test. So the first thing we want to do is we set up a null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that the average is equal to not not 500 but the average is 300 pounds so that they are within specification that the average strength is 300 pounds the alternate is that the average is not equal to 300 pounds that they'll be less than 300 pounds so the idea the concern is that they would be less than right so let's go ahead and say less than this implies that it's also greater than so the average can be equal to or greater than so let's go ahead and do that properly mathematically so this is implied so the null hypothesis implies that the, that the strength of the ropes is good enough 300 pounds or more that would be good but less than 300 pounds would be bad that's the alternate hypothesis so we're going to set up a test to see if the null hypothesis is going to be rejected or is going to be not rejected based upon the information that they have. So again, when we think about it, here's the population. So we have a population mean of 300 and uh, the, we have a critical region on the upper side. We have a critical region on the lower side. So let's indicate those critical regions. So here we have the critical regions of the, on the upper side. We have a critical region on the lower side. Now we're not really concerned about the upper side, but we are concerned about the lower side. Now are we dealing with a one-tiered or one-tail test or a two-tail test? Well in this case, um, hmm, it depends how the question is asked. If they want to see, if they don't also don't want to have it be bigger than, if they want it to be equal then, so let's do it this way. Let's go ahead and we assume that we just want to see if it's 300 pounds or not. In that case, it's a two-tail test. If we assume that it's equal to or greater than 300 pounds test so that we don't have to worry about the upper limit, then it's a one-tail test. It would be slightly different. So let's do a two-tail test. Either it meets a specification, 300 pounds is the average with a standard deviation of 24, or it's not 300 pounds, either more or less. So we'll see in just a moment what the deal is. We do have an average of the sample that is less than 300 pounds. So again, we're concerned about not meeting the minimum standard. Okay, so what we need to do then is we need to realize that the, um, the level of confidence is 99%, so the level of significance is therefore equal to 0 0.01. That's 1%. And then what we want to do is we want to get the z-score of half of that because it's a two-tailed problem so therefore we want the z-score of 0 0.005 a half a percent in other words on the table we're going to look for a number that's 0 0.495 because a half percent more brings it up to 0 0.5 and see what the equivalent z-score is at that level so we're looking for 0.495 on the table which is right there it's in between uh, 2.57 and 2.58 so let's call it 2.575 so this is equal to 2.575 so on the lower limit we have minus so the z-score of half the level of significance is equal to minus 2.575 at this point right there and at this point the z-score at the half level of significance is equal to plus 2.575.
All right, so now we're going to find the test statistic to see if we fall into the non-critical region, which is good, or the critical region where we would reject the null hypothesis and therefore, hmm, it's going to be less. All right, or in this case, so I guess we can make it like this. That way we keep it as a two-tier problem. If it's less than, it would be a one-tier problem. So to be technically correct, I think we want to keep it as not equal to 300 pounds. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is calculate the test statistic, which is equal to the mean of the sample minus the mean of the population divided by the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the size of the sample. And so in this case, that's equal to 295 minus 300 divided by the standard deviation, which is 24 and the whole thing multiplied times the square root of the sample size, which is 45. All right. So the difference between those two is 5, of course, negative 5, divided by 24, and multiplied times the square root of 45, and we get 1.40. Negative, of course. Minus 1.40. Now notice that the test statistic is far less in value, I'll do the absolute value of the test statistic, is far less than the absolute value of the z value on the left side, because we're looking at the negative side, and so we can see that the test statistic right here, t, is equal to minus 1.40. Far smaller in value, in absolute value, than the z score, so that means that the test statistic, even though the average is 295, which is quite a bit less than 300, but with a sample size of 45, we're still within the acceptable range. So therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis says that the average of the population is 300 pounds. We're not rejecting that claim. So that is good enough. We can say that even though the average of the sample was 295, it is still close enough to 300 to say that we're not going to reject the null hypothesis. We're accepting the specifications. Those are good ropes. No problem. Continue manufacturing them. We just happened to pick a sample that on average was a little bit less than the average of the assumed average of the population. Now, what is our confidence level that we made the right decision? Well, the confidence level is 99%. That's pretty good confidence level. So I would say good enough. And notice that there was still quite a bit of margin, even at 99% confidence level, pretty good margin that we didn't get too close to that edge into that critical region. And so therefore, I'm fairly satisfied that we have good ropes. Now, what would happen if we went, if we went with a one-tailed problem? Hmm, what would that look like? A one-tail problem, well, we have a z of 0 0.01, that would be a smaller number. Hmm, let's check that for a moment. Let's say that we had a one-tail problem. That we didn't care about the upper limit, that we only cared about the lower limit. We only cared about this region right here. And now we're going to get z of the confidence level, or z of the level of significance that's equal to 1, not half of 1 percent, not without about percent. So what would that look like? So z of this is equal to z of 0 0.01, and that means we're looking for 0 0.49, not 0 0.495. That gives us a smaller z. So 0 0.49, 0 0.49 right there, that gives us 2.3, 2.33? No, 2.33. Uh, so that gives us a z of 2.33, and of course on the negative side that would be minus 2.33. So you can see that even if we made it a one-tailed problem, and we only cared about the one side, we want to be 99% sure that we're in that limit. Now no, notice the limit will move to the right a little bit because we're only dealing with one side instead of both sides. But still, we're 99% confidence that we don't need to reject the null hypothesis, so we're good even if we make it into a one-tail problem. And that is the way it's done. All right, one more.